Ukrainian soldiers are on high alert in the eastern Donbass region as Russian forces increase their pressure. Much of Western Europe bakes in an unusually early heat wave, with temperatures topping 40 degrees in France, Spain and Portugal. Campaigners in Sao Paulo demand a thorough investigation into the murders of journalist Dom Phillips and indigenous expert Bruno Pereira. Water supplies, agriculture, the economy and ongoing threats from Russian forces were the focus of talks between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and local authorities in Mykolaiv on Saturday. Moscow's forces attacked the city during the invasion of Ukraine and placed it under siege, but Ukrainian forces pushed the invading military back despite heavy shelling. Ukraine says Russia is concentrating on the cities of Sieverodonetsk and Bakhmut. In the Sierra Donetsk direction, he says, the enemy continues to fire from cannon artillery and multiple rocket launchers at the positions of our troops and civilian infrastructure near Lysyshansk, Meteolkine, Ostanivka and Voronova. Fighting continues for the city of Sierra Donetsk. In order to improve the tactical position for the enemy units, it tried to conduct assault operations outside the city but was unsuccessful. Russia says it's destroyed oil refining and fuel storage facilities which aimed to supply equipment to the Ukrainian military in Donbass. In Kremenchuk and Lysychansk, he says, high-precision air and ground-based weapons destroyed the facilities for oil refining and fuel storage intended to supply Ukrainian military equipment in the Donbass. Tensions are building in Lysychansk. Less than half the pre-war population remain there with no electricity and very few means of communicating with the outside world. <laughs> Hundreds of mourners gathered outside St. Michael's Cathedral in Kiev on Saturday for the funeral of 24-year-old political activist Roman Rotushny. He was known for helping start Ukraine's pro-EU revolution in 2014 and died fighting Russian troops in eastern Ukraine. Russia, Russia this Russian matrix way of thinking, culture, values, it's wrong and it's deadly and it's dangerous for us, she says. And this is Roman's testament, get rid of this matrix, fight it. Roman is the generation that is the future of Ukraine, he says. Those people who think and do not live by patent, established standards, understand what is right and wrong. This is another dimension. Roman Rotushny's coffin was carried by four soldiers in military uniforms. Members of the military joined ordinary citizens among the crowds who gathered in Maiden Square. Mr. Rotushny was a law graduate and a freelance journalist. The mercury is rising all across Western Europe. From London to here in Luxembourg, people are making a dash for the shade. And it's France that's been particularly badly hit. Pretty much everywhere in the country, temperatures are above 30 degrees, with some areas even topping 40. For some in Paris, especially those in top four apartments with metallic roofs, it's all too much to bear. 70-year-old Christian can't get to sleep. He's part of a growing but largely unnoticed group of people in summer energy poverty, those who can't afford to cool themselves. Even with the help of a local non-profit organization, there's not much he can do. Christian says, I get up, I go there, I get up, I go to the bathroom, I come back. I drink a glass of water, then I sit down, I watch TV, and that's it, until 2 o'clock in the morning. The other time, it was 4 o'clock. We try to deal with each case individually, and it's often quite difficult. We are just passing through, but to see that they live in these conditions, personally, it revolts me, and it breaks my heart, too. And on Sunday, the heat wave is due to spread to more central and eastern areas of Europe, too, such as Germany and Poland. In many areas, water is already being rationed after an unusually dry spring, like here in northern Italy. Meteorologists say that the early heat wave is a sign of what's to come as global warming continues.
and in Spain, the signs of destruction are clear to see. As it's only June, many are worried of what the summer is to bring for much of Europe. A national memorial site has opened on the island of Utøya, Norway, for the 77 victims of the terrorist attack there in 2011. The memorial site consists of 77 bronze columns to commemorate each of the people killed in cold blood. Many adolescents were among the slain as the Norwegian Labour Party's youth organisation was holding its annual summer camp there. In London, trade unionists have protested against the cost of living crisis. Recently, inflation in the UK hit a 40-year high, with many households being forced to cut back on their spending. While much of the world is dealing with rapidly rising prices due to the invasion of Ukraine and stretched supply chains, the UK has recorded the highest inflation rate in the G7 group of nations. US President Joe Biden took a tumble while he was riding his bicycle near a beach in his home state of Delaware. Biden was unhurt and immediately got up, telling onlookers, I'm good. The president told a small crowd of well-wishers and reporters that he had lost his balance as he tried to pull a foot out of a bike clip. An official has said that no medical attention was necessary. A rally and vigil has taken place in Sao Paulo in support of British journalist Dom Phillips and indigenous expert Bruno Pereira, who were killed while travelling in a remote area of the Amazon rainforest. Campaigners are demanding a thorough investigation into their deaths. We cannot work feeling afraid, he says, afraid that when we are in the field we're abandoned or that when we're working in the office we're also being persecuted. Enough. Official police reports have said no mastermind was behind the murders of the two individuals, but indigenous leaders are unhappy with the investigation. I disagree with the federal police, he says. It makes me think that they want to avoid responsibility. Don Phillips was identified from remains found deep in the Amazon and additional remains are expected to be those of Bruno Pereira. These are the hidden mountains of the Cauca region of Colombia. Here the intense green of 16,000 hectares of coca plants illuminates the roads, with much destined to become cocaine. Drug trafficking has exploded, attracting violent armed groups to protect the plantations. No matter what government is in power, little has changed here. In Cauca, there was a massacre of some Nasa indigenous people. This boy was just 14. Fabian has lost two brothers to violence. He's also been shot by one of the groups, the FARC dissidents. He says they are armed groups where the majority of the people are made up of minors. There's no political guideline or even a revolutionary guideline. They are only focused on the economic side of things. More than anything, they're focused on defending the illicit cultivation and all the money that that generates. Ovimar is an indigenous guard. He says that the peace pact with the FARC militants produced the atomization of the group creating those that fight now for the coca crop. Days after this conversation, he was targeted in a gun attack, luckily surviving it. The graffiti of the armed groups on the sides of the roads shows the magnitude of the conflict between the guerrillas and the narco paramilitaries. 89 indigenous chiefs have been assassinated in Colombia since 2018, the majority in Cauca. A community peace guard for the NASA says I don't live in my community for that same reason, because I've had to leave constant persecution, which has affected all of us. The fact that we carry this vest, this cane, puts us in the eye for them, that we are the obstacle, that we do not let them work and do what they want. Indeed, Cauca is the deadliest region in Colombia for human rights defenders.
More than 900 social and community leaders have been killed here in Colombia since 2016, when the peace pact with the FARC guerrilla was signed. NASA denounced that violence here in Northern Cauca is fueled by the deficient fulfillment of that agreement. They say they need more schools and also economic projects for the community. From Northern Cauca, Hector Estepa for Euronews.